Welcome back everyone, my name is Stefan and this is the French Cooking Academy. It is still November, as you can see I'm growing a mustache and today we're doing the famous poulet marengo or chicken marengo recipe. That very simple recipe was invented on the battlefield and was one of the favorite of Napoleon. It consists of simple pieces of chicken that's going to be pan fried, deglazed with cognac, a bit of chicken stock and cooked with garlic and tomatoes. When the dish is finished, it is served with the pan-fried croutons and fried eggs. That sounds very interesting. Anyway, before we start the recipe, a little bit of history about that famous battle. Let's go. So let's have a look at this origin and the origin of that recipe. Why was it called the poulet marengo, chicken marengo? Because of this, what you see on your screen, the Battle of Marengo. It's a battle that took place the 14th of June, 1800, in a small, near the small village of Marengo in northern Italy. So it's not in France. On the right hand side, you had the French army uh, led by the general uh, Napoleon Bonaparte and Napoleon. And on the left hand side, the enemy was the Austrians. And this is the battle plan, as you can see here. So shortly after, of course, they went to battle and it will look something like that. And until mid the French were badly losing against the Austrian that had much more firepower because they had 50 cannons. Uh, fortunately for Napoleon, his dear friend uh, de Say, which is uh, you know another commander or general, I'm not sure, came with his cavalry and joined forces and managed to kind of wipe out the Austrian army and they won the battle. When the battle was finished, of course, everybody was uh, kind of hungry and especially Napoleon because he was really uh, someone that loved a few things in life. The first thing was actually horses. Uh, he had a collection of 13 horses and the one you see here is the one that was, uh, he was riding during the battle and he named that horse, which is an Arab stallion, uh, he gave the name Marengo, uh, and that was his official name after the battle, and that was the, you know, the, the horse used one. Well, what's left was just a little skeleton here. But anyway, the other things he liked in life was eating, and especially chicken. Hence why we have this recipe today. He orders his, his kind of officers uh, to make the, the cooks, let's say, to go and prepare some chicken dish because he was hungry. You know, it was, uh, you know, the, the big battle of making him hungry. So they wanted to make something, but there was nothing at all. The enemy kind of stole everything and there was really nothing. So they dispatched three guys in the countryside and they came back with a chicken or a few chickens, apparently tomatoes, garlic, uh, some eggs, some bread, and apparently some sweet water crayfish. The cook decided to borrow some cognac uh, that you can see here uh, from Napoleon and he decided to make a dish. And this is where the recipe kind of came about. A very, very simple and rudimentary chicken with garlic, tomatoes and cognac. And this is what we're going to try to recreate today. I'm not going to do the modern version because there's too much addition of new ingredients. I'm going to try to use these simple ingredients and these pans, because they were always saying that they had no pans at all. Like some guy managed to find in a nearby farm some old pans like that. That's all they had. So a bit of fun today and let's try to recreate that battlefield recipe. And here we are on the battlefield and let's imagine I'm using a cast iron stilet. The cuisinier chef of the time is called Dunant. It's originated from Switzerland and he has to make that dish with very few ingredients. Dunant was an experienced cook and he knew that by putting a little bit of oil in his pan, olive oil, and using the bones, he could make an instant mini stock, chicken stock. Let's say like a brown chicken stock. So the first thing he's going to do is to brown his chicken, caramelize the juices and add some water to make that stock. Okay, so after a good 10 minutes on medium to high heat, you got some uh, brownish color on here. And what he's going to do here is just add a little bit of water because there's nothing else. And that water here, as you can see, is going to allow us to really, really detach all the juices from the chicken and get some kind of very basic stock. But that is very important. Uh, so we're going to leave this to reduce just a little bit and then reserve it. To reserve the juices, take a small container. You're going to get rid of all the bones first. Next, take all this, these juices out of my pan. And that's what the book was saying that Durand did. He did a stock and then discard it and put it on the side. So that's our first step. We've got a stock. We're now able to start cooking the actual chicken. So what Durand did, again, a bit of olive oil, that's what they had, and they're going to put the chicken in. So we can now add 
Our chicken piece is in on a medium heat. Huh? Maybe I'll do skin first on this. So add a bit of color. And again, it says on the book it was with an addition of salt and pepper. So a bit of salt in there. And a good amount of pepper. That's all we had, really. After cooking your uh, chicken pieces for five minutes on one side, you're going to turn them over. Uh, so you get a bit of color here. And another five minutes on the other side. After five minutes, our chicken is now pre-cooked, or part cooked, shall I say. So you're going to remove it and reserve it on a tray. And we're going to start our sauce. We're going to be using a substantial amount of cognac. You can use wine instead. If uh, you want to do this, turn your heat off first to make sure there's no flame. It's not a flambe and put your exhaust fan off if you have any. And you're going to start with the caramelized juices. Usually you use onions or shallots. In this case, we're just going to put garlic. That's all they had at the time and bathe it in the oil to get this taste going. Okay, so I've got garlic in there. There was two garlic cloves just for a few seconds and to raise the flavor. And I'm now going to add a lot of cognac. It's not a flambe. And we're not flambe anything. We're just going to deglaze. That's the order of the sauce. Aromatic first and first deglazing with an alcohol of your choice. Usually it's wine. It can be spirits as well. Like what we have here. As you can see, it's already reduced. And now you can add the second thing, which is that stock we had. Okay. All the stock in and we're gonna put the heat back on and leave this to reduce a little bit as soon as the heat is on look what's happening it's reducing nicely and look at the juice we've got here beautiful it's nice and brown and let me taste that you see it's reducing and we got this nice alternation of like brown chicken the garlic in the background and that cognac kind of edge on the side it's honestly pretty good but what's missing here the tomato uh, half a can of beautiful diced tomato to really add some further taste into this. So mix it well and then we're going to add our chicken back. We can now add back our chicken and what we're going to do is some kind of braised chicken really. You know, we're going to put this on low heat and basically this is the beginning of your marengo recipe which is basically chicken in a beautiful garlic and cognac tomato sauce. It's now time to leave your chicken to cook a further 10, maybe 12 minutes until it's cooked. So I'm going to do five minutes on that side and then turn them over. And by then it should be ready. Now we can prepare the other garnish while we're waiting. While we're waiting for the chicken, we're going to pan fry some mushrooms, a bit of salt and a bit of pepper, like what we had before. And that's it. All right, so as soon as you get a bit of a golden color, turn the heat off and you reserve your mushroom in a container. Now the other garnish uh, that was served with the poulet marengo, chicken marengo, is crouton, large pieces of fried bread. And this is baked in olive oil again. So we're just gonna color these breads, huh? they're like large pieces and we'll cut them in two. As soon as your lovely croutons are nice and golden like that, you're gonna take them out and reserve them on the side. Last thing we need to do is a fried egg. My chicken is now cooked, I've turned the heat off, let it rest a little bit, and the last thing we need is a fried egg. At the time, they were really overcooking the eggs because it says they were cut in quarters, so I've put lots of olive oil again. I'm just gonna kind of uh, almost shallow fried an egg in there until it's all cooked. So what I'm doing here to defy the odds of the time, you know, to have that almost poached egg, I'm gonna basically, you know, bathe it with that oil in there, and we're gonna make a, a souffle egg. Uh, uh, as I call it, I've just invented that word, but I don't know what that is. And here we are, imagine Dunant, uh, that cook have to serve Napoleon's, I'm sorry to make a makeshift table. So how do we uh, really serve that, uh, you know, that, that, that chicken in here? So I'll just try to do one serving. Uh, so from here, you will have some extra sauce. Uh, so you're going to cover with a little bit of, of the sauce. Next, I think Dunant. Uh, remade these, uh, you know, these, these mushrooms instead of uh, of the crayfish. So a few mushrooms in there. And Napoleon, he wants to eat something. He's kind of hungry. And basically, that was served with a uh, crouton, uh, which is that kind of fried bread uh, on the side like that. You know, very rustic uh, with 
that fried egg on top. Mm. And I'm just going to put some sauce on the side. And to finish, of course, uh, like everything, maybe a little bit of salt, a little bit of black pepper, uh, because that was really uh, the only thing they had on the battlefield. And there you go, Napoleon. Maybe decorate with a bit of parsley. They surely had some wild parsley somewhere there. Uh, a bit of parsley here and there, being a bit rustic. And that was it. The dish was born, the chicken marengo. It's not something special. But what I thought Napoleon really liked is these things. You know, because these croutons, when you mix that with a layer of mushrooms, tomato sauce, and ima imagine a bite of egg and chicken. Wow. Oh, the oiliness of the olive oil crouton with that sauce and the mushrooms is already amazing. Mix that with chicken, you are flying to heaven, honestly. Simple dish, but very effective. But that's it really guys, look at this, what we've done, the battlefield recipe from Dunant served to Napoleon. Here it is, it will really look something like that, which is quite amazing, it actually tastes really good. So if you want to try it at home, do not hesitate. It's a really uh, good fun to make, it's a bit of a challenge, and I really enjoyed it today. But that's it for the video guys, as always, huh? if you like it, give it a thumbs up, drop me a comment, subscribe to the channel. If you want to subscribe to my Patreon page on tp.com, do remember, it's helping the channel a lot. As for me, I'll leave you with that picture and I'll see you all on my next French cooking video. Have fun, bye bye.